Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Hey, Ellen, you're getting really patriotic this year. I've seen recently you've planted up a British patio container with only British grown plants. You are absolutely right. I did. And it's a very beautiful British patio container pot at that. And all the plants in the container were from Hilliard Garden Centre. I know, gorgeous lavender. You've got that lovely perennial candy tuft as well. Do you like mine, though? I've got that lovely golden acer. Are you jealous? I am not jealous because mine is nicer than yours. So Uh, I planted uh, up a really nice, cool, calming, well-being kind of pot and yours was fiery and vibrant, wasn't it? Wow, absolutely. And those plants are from Hillier Garden Centres and then they actually support Series 7 of the Plant-Based Podcast. And did you know that Hillier actually nurture over a million top quality plants each year at their Hampshire nursery? Hillier are your go-to for quality British grown plants. So why not visit hillier.co.uk to shop now or search Hillier Garden Centres on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and you'll get loads of inspiration for creating your ideal garden or outdoor space. Okay, we're well into flower show season and we've really got a great exclusive for you today. We're here with Helen Boehm and she is the lady behind all of those amazing floral marquee displays. She works with many of the specialist nurseries up and down the UK, a couple abroad as well, I believe. And we're going to talk to her all about what she does and the fact that she's got the best job in horticulture, I believe. So welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I feel uh, privileged to be here. So thank you. And we feel really excited because when we get any kind of behind the scenes kind of gossip, then we Mm. are very happy. Yeah, that's good. I can give you plenty of that. Oh, that's cool. We wanted to have you on the podcast for a while, but your agent kept telling us no. Oh, right. Did you know you've got an agent? (laughs) I'm a busy person. (laughs) She's a busy lady. No, but thank you so much. Really, really cool. Can you tell us you know what you do but what also you did before so it's all gardening i kind of realized that and flowers but how did it how did it happen and what's your role now okay so i um studied horticulture at rittle and um i was a garden designer for probably about 12 years Mm -hmm. and after working for a landscaping company and then for myself um when i was working uh, alone i i kind of felt like i wanted to be back in a team atmosphere um so i decided just kind of for a bit of a break I volunteered at the Chelsea Flower Show to be a plant hunter Um, and uh, when I was there I I mean I loved it I loved the fact that I could walk into the show before it opened (laughs) I got to see all the exhibits meet the exhibitors so what was a plant hunter then? so it's basically a volunteer that works in the pavilion or in any of our our floral marquees so they walk around and if somebody's looking for a specific plant you can then direct them to the right exhibitor I didn't know that existed yeah job isn't it yeah. amazing so we get lots of really good volunteers coming mm. along and it's people that have plant knowledge so yeah. obviously with my background in garden design i applied for oh to volunteer God. and did that so, so cool. yeah so after i did uh, spent the day at, Ch- at chelsea i then decided that i'd actually quite like to work in the shows department so i applied for about four or five different jobs <laughs> yeah and actually didn't didn't get through to the interview stage for any of them except for um, the deputy show manager of Hampton Mm -hmm. and when I went for the interview I mean I've got no event experience at all um, and but the interview went really really well so uh, they came back to me a few days later and said look we want to offer you a different role it's brand new never been done before it's actually the floral marquee manager Mm -hmm. and we would want you to go from show to show to look after all of our exhibitors 
writers and be with them for the entire show season. Do you think you'd like to do mm-hmm. that? So I was wow. like, yeah, sure. That sounds like heaven. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I studied horticulture, I actually studied um, commercial crop production and I really thought I was going to go into the nursery industry. Right. So mm-hmm. growing plants was really the, the direction I wanted to take. But somehow life led me down a different pathway mm. and I ended up designing gardens. Yeah. I mean, I loved it and I feel like I'm quite a creative person yeah. in some aspects. So it suited me at the time. <laughs> but yeah, I think growing plants is really where my passion lies. Oh, wow. And now look at you just I like know. here yeah. amongst all of the flowers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously my role's grown over the, the eight years that I've worked for the RHS. I've um, been responsible to try and go out and recruit and find new exhibitors. Mm. So that's actually a big part of my role mm. now. That's so cool. Is that easy or...? Um, Yes and no. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we've had two years of COVID, so mm-hmm. my journeys yeah. around the country, yeah. uh, meeting growers or even visiting other other plant fairs or shows mm-hmm. hasn't really happened. Um, however, during lockdown, it's enabled me to sort of really hang out on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's actually been quite incredible seeing... Uh, new producers of plants yeah. like people that have had like maybe their passion or their hobby yeah. they've actually started to grow more mm. and decide maybe this mm. is the time for me to follow my passion so mm-hmm. I'm kind of like capturing some of those at the moment That's and cool. That's yeah. really um, cool. I'm starting to meet them and mm-hmm. um, really kind of get them on their journey and see if they can come with us and come and be part yeah. of our shows I love that you, um, earlier on there's a lovely lady here who's like looking up after the nurture area because we're here at Malvern at the moment and she said to me the same as you she was working uh, on her own and she just really wanted to be part of a team and she ended mm. up with this role with the RHS and she said I just love it yeah. everyone's so friendly like we're working with plants and gardens like, like is there a happier place to work Helen? <laughs> well I mean I, I love my job and I've always loved it but yeah. I, I feel quite lucky because I don't just work on one show I, I get to work on all of the shows mm. so I've got all the different different teams back mm-hmm. back in London in Vincent Square that I get to be with um, I've also got apologies uh, for that line <laughs> it's a very beautiful one <laughs> wow that's oh, there's that's another amazing. one amazing oh. Hang on, we've got, we've got a fly pass for you Helen, did you know this is what we do when you're a guest on the podcast? <laughs> no I do wow. wow, look at that <laughs> know who we are <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> um, but going back to working with different people and different teams I mean I get to work with all the exhibitors mm-hmm. and um, I love seeing them mm. learning from them and just helping them be part of our shows and, and yeah. hopefully making their lives a bit easier yeah. when they get here and there must be such a mix of the traditional ones that have probably been coming for 40 years or more kind of newer people and also the people who are trying to entice as well yeah, I mean, that's that's mm. really what my role now is focusing on. So um, it, originally it was just really to kind of oversee the, the floral marquees mm. on a day-to-day basis and their setup and running. But now I'm thinking of what's the floral marquee going to look like in five years' time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yes, I think it's so important we protect the heritage of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a really important part of the history of the RHS mm-hmm. that we still have the traditional exhibits. But equally, right. we want to inspire people. Mm. We want it to be created creative um, and we want to embrace that the the small niche niche growers mm-hmm. that right. come along you know they might be looking for something a bit different they mm-hmm. might need social media coverage mm-hmm. or they might need exposure to a, a different type of audience or a different type of customer mm-hmm. so and we want to tap into their audience as mm-hmm. well so sure, yeah, yeah well, so it's both ways yeah, doesn't absolutely, it absolutely absolutely so so i'm yeah that's my thing that i've yeah. got in my mind what what will this place be like in five uh-huh. years time but is it like uh, because i know there's a lot of newer growers in the last few years of like houseplants for example so it must be easy to find a new houseplant specialist but is it harder for outdoor are there newer growers for outdoor or more specialist places that you're still finding? Because I feel like it's only a certain number of growers in the UK and where do the new ones come from? And the houseplant ones have come, but the outdoor plants, how about yeah. that? Yeah, um, well, every year at Malvern, I mean, obviously mm. not in COVID, but every year I, I hold a, have a seminar for potential new exhibitors. Okay. So uh-huh. on Tuesday, I had 11 growers that came mm-hmm. to uh, visit the show mm-hmm. um, and we had a range of different plant specialisms. So um, I had a Crocosmia breeder from the Isle of Wight that came wow, and cool. he's really keen 
keen to, yeah. to come to our shows. He only sells Crocosmia yeah. that he breeds himself. And he wants to come and display them in a in a yeah. bit of an artistic way because yeah, him and his cool. wife cool. love That's being... Really cool. um, oh, hello, there's a dog. Oh, there's a dog behind oh. us. <laughs> hello, aren't you beautiful? Sorry. <laughs> um, Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had, um, I think you know them, Seagate irises. Oh, yes, we've yeah. been there. Yeah. It's amazing. Love it there. It's so yeah. gorgeous. Oh, are they going to come to a show? I hope so. Oh, oh yeah. I really hope they do. Like, the guy who's taken over oh, has only been there a few years, hasn't mm. he? And I think he was really really up for doing mm. stuff and when we went there I had no idea it was going to look like mm. it looked yeah, and, you know yeah. I've seen it driving past and it looked kind of pretty but oh, to have them here yeah that You've got to do, do it, Helen. What do we need to do to... You've got to do it. Let's, do we need to pelt them with persuade, Instagram let's messages? Let's <laughs> um, I'd love to know, like, now it is show season has kicked off. You seem very calm. Yeah. But are you calm? Do you feel <laughs> calm or do you feel inside slightly kind of... Ah! I'm, I think, actually, I'm, I'm a fairly calm person. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what, that's what helps me with my job. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at the moment, I've, I've done it so many times <laughs> over and over that I... I, I feel okay. I think um, at the beginning of May, so, or just before I came here, I was thinking, oh my goodness, Malvern, Chelsea. So many. It's, it's a big month. It's yeah. a really big month. And I know that the days are going to be long. The hours mm -hmm. are going to be, it's going to be super intense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um but once you're here and you're doing it, it's always the anticipation I find worse than when you're actually on mm. site. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, always the way. Yeah. I think that's so, the same with almost yeah, everything, definitely. isn't it? You know? yeah. yeah. So, but now we're doing it. We're we're on the road mm -hmm. and it's all good. And it's looking amazing. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> it looks good. So what goes into creating a display? Like how far in advance is it planned? Like do generally do growers do the same display each year? And if they want to change it up, do they then liaise with you? Or do you put some input there with your creative background as well how does all that work um it can vary so um exhibitors will apply for shows from um sort of july august mm -hmm. time that's when our applications go live okay. and then they'll submit their ideas on on what they want to do display wise mm -hmm. yes we have got some exhibitors that tend to do um similar displays at each show they might change some of the varieties that they're displaying or <gasps> some of them might even display um have a broad palette of plants mm -hmm. that you know like hillview curriculum now mm. and later on they'll be displaying perennials so mm. it can change mm -hmm. um, some of them want to be creative and want to do new stuff over mm -hmm. you know every year um, but it does come down to, to cost to a lot of them mm -hmm. you know investing in props yeah. is yeah. it can yeah. actually be quite an expense yeah. and you know running a, a plant in business yeah. can they, sometimes it can be difficult to invest in that we have had schemes in the past where we've offered creative mentoring, mm -hmm. where we've we've given them some funding to come and do something mm -hmm. a bit different and experiment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can okay. we can help them, um, and we are looking to kind of reintroduce some mm -hmm. kind of creative mentoring going so, forward. So you give them a lot of support, then, don't you, exhibitors? Yeah, I mean. What we want to do is we want to to protect or or help the ones that come and support our shows. I mean, it's really important that we have mm -hmm. them here. We wouldn't have a flower show if they weren't mm -hmm. part of it. So, um, yeah, it's it's hugely important. Yeah. And also, the RHS values the the industry. You yeah, know, the, yeah. the it's yeah. supporting the industry as well. So, whatever I can do or we can do as a shows department mm -hmm. to, you know, enable them to be here and be part of the show is is what we've got yeah. to do. Yeah, the to know. Yeah, you're the girl. I hope so. <laughs> I think for many people, like well, when I come to a flower show, kind of my main focus is the floral marquee. Yeah. And I think probably a lot of people are like, especially the people yeah, that come with I flat agree. pack, like flat pack trolleys, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. I love definitely. seeing people walk away from the shows with their trolley full of plants. I just <laughs> I think, oh, you're so happy that you've Ooh, got all of yeah. these lovely plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you were also running the Master Grower series the last few years as yes, well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, when uh, I started looking for new exhibitors, <laughs> I sort of realised that we weren't doing anything to highlight some of the nurseries that have been exhibiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the idea of um, highlighting specialist growers under the mm -hmm. RHS Master Grower Initiative. Oh no, this has just all clicked. I don't know why. Yeah. I saw this. Uh, you, did, was this at Chelsea? Did you have something Master Growers at Chelsea? Well, we, oh. we feature the, 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 the... Yeah, we yeah. feature That's all it. of them in a, in a smaller way at Chelsea, but 
um, individually they all get to exhibit at one show and we help them with their mm -hmm. cu we oh, help curate, curate and put a real spotlight system. on them I know yeah. at Hampton it was right down the centre wasn't yes, it yeah, yeah yeah so um, so we've done it since 2016 and it's been great we, we get a photographer to go and visit the nursery we mm -hmm. film them we help them you know come up with the design if they need it I mean mm -hmm. some of them are great they can just get on and do it themselves mm -hmm. um, but in the past I've, I've designed it myself and I've mm. been there helping them prep it and yeah. get it ready yeah. you do all open. sorts I've done all sorts I guess sorts. you're bringing that experience with the design aren't yeah. you so you're, yeah. you're the best best lady for the job as well yeah so yeah. and it's you know uh, yeah I find mm. now I've done it since 2016 I, I know kind of the format that works mm. but it's great when they want to do it themselves as well because sometimes they can put a slightly different perspective yeah. on it right. so, yeah, true, true. Yeah, so absolutely. we can learn from each other and oh, that's help cool. evolve Hello, I'm Anya and I have created my garden by growing plants from seeds and cuttings. A propagation is my true passion and early summer is great for taking softwood cuttings of many perennials. One of my favourite plants is um, hydrangea and hydrangeas are very easy to propagate at this time of the year and you don't need any special equipment. All you need to do is to cut a strong, about five inches long stem without buds on it. Um, remove all the leaves from the lower two inches of the stem and place your cuttings in a pot with cutting compost. Um, you need to keep it moist and always store your cuttings in a light place but out of direct sun. If you would like to know what to do next with your cuttings, please listen to the next episode of Plant Based Podcast in June. And in the meantime, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Anya the Garden Fairy, where I share loads of practical and easy to follow advice how to create a beautiful garden. Well, I think you must be similar to Eleanor. You're living your life mostly on the road, you know, like through the season. Any tips for doing that? <laughs> um, tips for packing, yeah. which is great. <laughs> tips for packing, had, tips for food and stuff. I had a like, terrible day yesterday yeah. trying to pack. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Especially oh. different weathers and all of <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the hardest thing. <laughs> I mean, I think last year I took about... Uh, 13 pairs of shoes to tatter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm. don't ask me, me for tips on packing yeah. because I'm the world's worst. I throw oh. everything in, panic pack all the time. That's exactly <laughs> what I've done. But what about like something I find difficult um, is like keeping healthy on the road. Like just yeah. eating what is at hand is like so easy to do and that is yeah. inevitably not good for you. Yeah. How do you, do you bring a packed lunch? <laughs> um, I, I try and um, balance it out a bit. I mean, when I'm at Chelsea and mm. some of the other shows, I'll take my Nutribullet. Yeah. I'll always have a smoothie so I know I can get some green mm. stuff inside me. Um, yeah, and I try and... I know it's hard when you're doing a long day, but like mm. being here, I, I walk up in the hill every morning. Yeah, at wow. morning just nice. to, just and it's so easy of, not yeah, to. It's really yeah, nice. it's good that you make the effort. Definitely. Yeah, I just think that yeah. um, well, exercise for me is a big thing, so yeah. it just helps clear my mind, and then I feel focused, ready for the day ahead. Yeah, really cool. oh, I completely yeah. get that. Um, the food situation for me, being yeah. plant based, can all, can be tricky. So yeah. I always come away with a bag full of food just mm. in case, you know. Yeah. Just like being sure that you can actually eat and find time to eat yeah. because you're super busy you know yeah. so just yeah I could have easily gone all day without eating I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. and you're just so hungry so you just oh, have a big plate of chips mm. you know yeah. but you always I always start off good and then once it gets once you get more tired mm. and you've been here more days it but just at least you sits. started good I know. <laughs> which is better than starting bad it is. Bad, so it yeah. is I see a positive there yeah. uh, so I'm, this is, I really want to know some gossip Helen okay, okay. so <laughs> I, I want to know like with everything as busy as it is, have, have, are there any disasters? Um, well, or are you just completely under control? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, completely under control. Um, we, I mean, yeah, we have had the odd, odd disaster here and there. I mean, sometimes weather can be can cause havoc. Mm -hmm. I remember here a few years ago where we had the most almighty downpour, and mm -hmm. then the marquee. At, 
totally flooded. Oh. So people were stuck, you know, yeah. marooned on their stands oh um, where there was like a foot of water, like oh. literally pouring through the marquee. Oh. Um, and then also we had some pretty hectic weather at um, at Chatsworth in its first year. Uh-huh. Again, I was there. Oh, <laughs> was that wind and wind, yeah. water, rain, yeah. water. Uh, I mean, the amount of bark that we had to put down in the yeah. floral marquee on top of boards. It was just. And you can't always predict it. Either, no, you? but yeah. it was just. It was exhausting. It was very emotional. Yeah. Right. Yeah, We'd all waited yeah, wow. for this first show. It was yeah. That was probably one of the toughest days' oh work gosh, I've ever done. Yeah. Mm. But they're probably like, um, you then create a bond with some of the exhibitors, I guess, at the same time through that. Yeah, yeah. you do. I mean... Because you're all there to support each other. Definitely. Yeah, mm. I've got I've got good good um, good relationships with all of them. And mm-hmm. we have been through some tough times. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, it's yeah. It, you just want to help each other out. So. It's really nice. So yeah. that, that's a lot about horticulture, though, isn't it? In yeah. general, people do tend to want to help each yeah. other. Yeah, share know? plants and this and that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's natural, nice. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what would you say has been kind of like um, career highlight or proudest moment? You know, maybe a display that's particularly memorable. Um, I think that my career highlight was probably the first um, RHS Master Grower exhibit that I did with uh-huh. Hook Screen Herbs, and um, it was just. It was yeah. It was it was hard work because mm. I was so so invested in it, and yeah. we didn't know how it's going to be received. But it was just brilliant. It had so mm-hmm. much attention. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, how do you judge how well it's received? Um, do you s- stand there in disguise yeah. <laughs> you know, and spy think, on people? <laughs> I think what it is is it's usually the judges because ah, okay. Master Grower actually isn't judged. Mm. It's an award in its own right. Yeah. So when the judges walk in, they all gather around it and go oh my goodness, yeah. this is amazing. This is so good. I've had, I get really good feedback mm. and they always comment on mm-hmm. how how wonderful the, the content mm. is in there or, or whatever it is that's on display. So, but as a result of the, the hook screen exhibit, the following year, mm-hmm. I met the Queen. Oh. So that was my... As a reward. <laughs> well, well we, had, we had a mini feature with, you know, the um, at Chelsea, we had a, a display of all the mast growers. They yeah. all created mini, mini, sort of um, containers with their plants and um, the Queen came and I was asked to explain to her all about Master Grower. Oh, wow. so cute. So Were I, you nervous? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had so to be cool. taught how to curtsy. Really? Yeah. And um, and then somebody came and gave me a little warning before she was coming towards me and then Sue Biggs introduced her to me and I did my curtsy and, <laughs> mm-hmm. and told her all about it for about two minutes. <laughs> but it was so good and then they the royal photographer took a photo of us of me curtsying and it was on their twitter page and instagram oh, wow. that's so cute. Yeah. Wow. yeah so i i feel really proud of that yeah. I feel you proud. should feel proud of yeah, that totally. yeah, wow. yeah. It, with with so much creativity in the floral marquees and uh, all of the exhibitors is there do you take away any bits of it for your own garden your own planting like are you inspired by them What's your own garden yeah. like, oh, basically? And I know in there you've got five odd auriculars ready to take home. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We're not jealous at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say my garden. I mean, my husband's a gardener. Mm-hmm. I'm away at shows a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's the, it gets its way down on the list of priorities. I mean, yeah. the only thing that I do do is I have pots of plants everywhere, mm. um, all around my front door. So as soon as I walk up my path, yeah. I see I see colour. I've got my main front border is I try and keep that looking full of lovely plants mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's work in progress, definitely. I always think it's funny, isn't it, when you work in horticulture that everyone expects you to have the most perfect mm-hmm. garden or the, I don't know, the most wonderful yeah, photographic yeah, garden. Apart from you, Michael, you do have the most amazing <laughs> yeah. photographic no, garden. But but no, this is actually a really interesting little segue because you just said that you keep your front garden very tidy. Is your back garden very small or you haven't got one? No, my back garden is yeah. quite big uh-huh. so it kind of wraps around the side of the yeah. house so i've got an area of land that i we will call it land it sounds a bit yeah. grand doesn't it um no i've got an area that needs definitely needs work doing uh-huh. to it like a lawn or something yeah. but i've also got some really mature trees at the end of the garden uh-huh. which okay. is a bit wild yeah. that's so lovely. at the that's moment nice. i've got all yeah. cow parsley growing oh, wild cool. garlic that's a really cool vibe yeah. and, and i actually love going up there yeah. just to kind of just be under the trees yeah. just to chill yeah. work yourself and yeah. reset no it's just that question because I think that I actually 
given more attention to my back garden rather than my front. Yeah, yours is in reverse. Yeah. yeah, 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 it really is. So I'm almost like, I don't mind as much what the neighbours say about the front garden, but yeah. the back garden, because that's my space. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, mm. I don't care what the neighbours are enjoying. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, about our, my place. <laughs> where my house is situated, it's yeah. kind of a bit weird. It's, uh-huh. it's two cottages into one and it's, um, our, our garden is hidden away. We're, uh-huh. we're set in the middle of yeah. lots of other big gardens. So um, no one really sees the front, we, the front garden's the same oh. As our back oh, so it's a bit garden. Right, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's but it's why you're welcome to the house in that case. It's my yeah. welcome to the house. Oh, everyone can wow. see my front garden and my back garden. I have oh, one of those murder. bisexual gardens, so you, where you can walk. Bi- <laughs> bisexual. Oh. Bisexual. <laughs> I've got a bisexual garden. <laughs> <laughs> I might have. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Um, but everyone can walk down the passage at the back. And then, like, yeah. there's the low fence, and you can uh-huh. see into the garden. Yeah. It's basically all containers. <coughs> but um, like, my next door neighbour said, "Oh, your containers are looking really pretty," oh, and cute. I felt like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> Done absolutely nothing to oh. them whatsoever, but thank you so much. But you're right. Do you do it to please the neighbours, yeah. or do you do it for yourself? Yeah. You know. I hate that my neighbours can see my garden from above. I'm almost like, it's for me. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to see yeah, it. It's totally. my garden. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's true. So, Helen, it's been so nice to yeah, speak to you been. today. But tell us, what's next in your program? Because this. Uh, episode is going out kind of mid-May which is like on the cusp of Chelsea so is there anything you can give a sneak peek okay. about Chelsea yeah. um, maybe yeah because um, yeah. podcasts will be pretty much out then so okay. you might as well just tell us <laughs> you might as well just tell us um, okay so I'll be I'll be going on site at Chelsea on the 12th of May mm-hmm. um, and I'll be in the pavilion working with my colleague Dario um, we've got uh, yeah we've got a few good things going on in there we've got an amazing exhibit by Raymond Deverson mm-hmm. he's I think he's got the largest <laughs> Just exhibit uh, oh, in the pavilion cool. this year. We've got some uh, show gardens going in there. Mm-hmm. For in the, the pavilion? Yeah, they're for the all about plants <laughs> category. Right. But okay. what I'm trying to do at the moment is some of the suppliers to those gardens, some of the plant growers, um, I'm trying to get them to come along and do little mini displays. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not exhibiting and doing a judge display, but they're going to come and do something small. Right. So mm-hmm. I've got a lovely nursery coming down from Lincolnshire called Woodland Plants. Mm-hmm. And they are super excited about bringing their plants along to Chelsea. Mm-hmm. That's um, nice. Yeah, we've got also, I'm working um, with some of my colleagues on a careers exhibit. Oh, wow. um, so we're going to be featuring some some profiles within the industry mm-hmm. on a display as you come into the marquee. And of course, we're going to be mentioning, we've got um, a tribute to the Queen for her platinum jubilee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm really... Got to be. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's a couple of things, but I'm... I'm you have to met that. her after all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Actually, it's really cool to hear you say about the careers because uh, not everyone knows how varied the careers in horticulture are, you know, so to be able to put that somewhere yeah. where people can see is yeah. really cool, yeah. I think we're featuring eight different um, nice. careers. Mm. So we've got eight mm. profiles mm. Uh, who are on display. Uh, we've got nice pictures um, and information about the jobs that they do. So, yeah. We're, mm. we're full on planning that at the moment. Wow. So. That's really cool. Full on wow. from Melvin into Chelsea. Ooh, wow. Uh. May's a busy month. Mm, well, well, this we episode's actually going out just the night before Chelsea starts as well. So it'll be 7 yeah. p.m. on the Sunday before Chelsea. There you go. Oh, right. Okay, I just I'll double checked to... our very special spreadsheet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely have to, uh, have to listen in and make sure yeah. I didn't say anything stupid. You didn't <laughs> say anything stupid at all. The thing is, even if you broke any news, then it was going to be broken the next day anyway. Sure. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy yeah, time you, here at Melbourne. Because you actually yeah. stayed behind, because you're going home tonight, so you I actually am. stayed behind to record the podcast, so yeah. thank you very much. Thank you're you. welcome. Much it's appreciated. been lovely. It's thank been lovely you. chatting. I'm Lucy, the owner of Unwrapped and Refill, a zero waste refill shop located at 715 Woodbridge Road in Ipswich. Today I'm going to briefly chat to you about reusing items you already have in the home. By reusing these items you're going to help lower the amount of stuff that's going to be heading into landfill or even being recycled. I think we're all slowly grasping that recycling isn't the solution and we need to be doing as much as we can to protect the environment around us. An easy way that you can start reducing your household waste would be to maybe look at each room in turn in the home and see what changes you could make for the better. Starting off in the kitchen, for example, you could reuse your veg peelings to make into a stock, start a compost pile, or if that isn't really your thing, maybe see if there's an allotment nearby that you can add them to. 
You could refill your cleaning liquid bottles or maybe make up a natural cleaning solution with no harsh chemicals in. Bicarb, citric acid and white vinegar, for example, are all fab bases for cleaning the home. Moving on to the bathroom, you could look at different toothpaste options, ones which have no plastic packaging. Did you know you can dip dental tabs, a soap, a powder, and even a paste in a jar? Lots of different options to choose from, and ones to suit every taste and budget. Or what about considering using a bar of soap to wash with? Or if that isn't really your thing, then again, you can simply refill your bottle of liquid that you already have. Instead of using single-use wipes, a very easy swap to make would be to use reusables, kinder to you and the planet. Once you've used them, just pop them in the wash and voila, you're good to go again. Another area to look at would be outside in the garden. So I've been chatting to a few customers over the last week, trying to get some ideas for the community garden space outside the back of the shop. I've already got plenty of pallets that I can reuse um, into making into some planters or somebody mentioned that you could use maybe an old bed frame which I thought was rather a clever idea. Another idea that was mentioned to me was whilst you're waiting for the water to heat up you can collect that running water and you can use that to water your plants or maybe get a water butt but look at maybe getting a second hand one before you're choosing to buy new. You could also get really creative with your plant pots. You could reuse an old washing up bowl, for example, and just literally pop some holes in the bottom or some china cups or maybe find some old wally boots that you have knocking around. Or if you get your strawberries and your grapes in those plastic punnets that have already got the holes in the bottom, they would make an excellent plant pot holder. Another customer also mentioned to me that she'd seen a greenhouse which had been made out of plastic bottles. I instantly googled this just to see what it did look like and in fact it was true there was uh, greenhouses made out of plastic bottles if this wasn't quite up to your standard maybe you can just cut some bottles up and use them as a gloss over your plants all right that's all from me today guys i hope i've given you a couple of ideas that you could maybe reuse some items in your home um, and make some changes for the better for you and the environment i'll hand you back over now to the plant-based podcast with the fabulous michael and ellen bye series seven of the plant-based podcast is brought to you with the help of hillier garden centers bringing you over 155 years of horticultural expertise. Shop their top quality British grown plants, both across their 19 garden centre locations or online. And to find your local centre or shop online, visit hillier.co.uk. Or search Hillier Garden Centres on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for inspiration on creating your ideal garden. Ellen, how long have you got? <laughs> well, based upon the chit chat pre the recording, uh, fifteen minutes. <laughs> well, because, well, basically, I knew you were in a hurry today, but when you arrived on the call, you were just like dribbling on and gossiping, and I was like, "Well, she's obviously not in a hurry," so I just kind of went with it. <laughs> you just was gossiping back, so I, I was know. just so happy to see your face and chat that I uh, thought that we were already late on the Zoom, and then you just... saw a lot of my face at Malvern, and it was three dimensional. I know, real life. How about that? Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Obviously, Chelsea, Mm -hmm. whoever's listening to this on Sunday evening, Chelsea Flower Show starts tomorrow and it's press day and we will be there in our glorious outfits. And we're actually in this little gossip, we're going to devote it to Chelsea because obviously our main interview is with Helen Bohem talking about Floral Marquee. And our gossip is going to actually talk about what we are looking forward to. Isn't it, Ellen? It, it sure is, Michael. <laughs> this is a very structured gossip. Like, we don't usually do it. It's even thrown me. And I like a structured gossip. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what are you looking forward to, young Ellen? Well, Are you going to be jet-lagged and even more moody than usual? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not moody. Um, I will be jet-lagged, though. So there might be a touch of mood. Or, or hanger usually creeps in. Yeah. weird times when you're jet lagged so I land in London the day before um, the morning before and I'm staying overnight on the Sunday night but I don't get to my hotel until like in the afternoon so I mm-hmm. went to sleep I think just 
Just rock up there. They'll probably let you in. Hopefully. I will ask. Especially obviously. if you're hangry. Because <laughs> I'll ask them to keep my case there anyway whilst I meander around yeah. London uh, it, like a zombie. But anyway, um, I am really looking forward to this year. And it's funny because it doesn't feel like it was that long ago because it was actually in September last year, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, definitely, it's, actually. Yeah. It's kind of like we've had... We had an autumn Chelsea and now a spring Chelsea as well, which is really, really cool. Um, one thing that really caught my eye is a few things I'm looking forward to, but one thing, one of the gardens is the 100% green biodiverse garden. Uh, mm-hmm. It's completely made of recycled um, materials um, and it's there to improve mind, body and the environment. And it's called Connected. Mm by Exanti and I think that's how you pronounce it it might be Exant or it might be Exanti I don't know Uh, by Exant Garden Um, yeah and it's completely green it's completely recycled it's there to encourage or to inspire people to encourage biodiversity and improve your mental and physical health well-being and like we know anyway that having a more biodiverse garden does improve well-being so kind of fitting them all in together is really cool Mm. Um, and afterwards the garden's then being donated to a cancer ward to help uh, patients with their recovery as well so I really like that element of the design of the garden designs that they are literally lifted and put somewhere you know really special somewhere really needed so it doesn't yeah. have the place yeah because we always wonder what happens to the gardens afterwards and it's nice to make it more sustainable but i think you know i've got a whole bunch of press releases in front of me and there's definitely that theme of sustainability and kind of that circular kind of use of the garden as well because i'm bringing an example here from gardena and they're actually putting together a trade stand with lynn lamborn i don't know if you know lynn she does the she's like called the warrior on waste and she does a lot of reusing lots of upcycling as well and gardena are actually announcing their two, 2022 rethink pledge which is based on the foundation of the three r's which obviously reduce repair and recycle and word has it that a lot of that display is actually going to be made up from the leftovers from a lot of the other displays that don't get used because of course when you go down to Chelsea lots of materials kind of you make your stand and it looks really kind of posh lovely shiny but what about all the materials you didn't use to make that stand and Lynn is apparently running all around the marquee in the showground hoovering up all of that leftover material in order to create the Gardena stand. How cool that's, is that? That's really, really cool. I really love the fact that Chelsea's got on board with recycling and like the environment and that kind oh, of definitely. thing. That's really cool. That wow. sounds very good. What else good. are you looking forward to? Um, well, um, I, all, I, I whenever I'm asked what plant I love the most, I will always say the French marigold, as we know. But my mm-hmm. second is the peony. And I know so many people say that. And there's a million plants that are all beautiful. But there's just something really special about them. And many people also say, you know, they don't flower for very long. But I think that's what makes them special because then when they do flower, it's so exciting that they're there and there's so many different varieties now as well. Um, And Primrose Hall Peonies, who always do such a beautiful stand in the floral marquee, and they always really think of something so creative. They're doing the Enchanting Peony display, which is a magical experience, uh, and it's going to be covered in a thousand peony blooms. Uh, some trees as well Um, it's going to be a bit Midsummer Night's Dream type of stand Mm -hmm. and they are also working on the basis of making people feel happy so there's so much going on at Chelsea this year about mental health well-being and making you feel good around plants and I just know that that stand will look amazing and it will probably smell amazing as well (laughs) Ah, (laughs) and, and also in June I can't remember the day. I think it's June the 10th, perhaps, 9th or 10th. I'm going to Primrose Hall Peonies. Oh, Uh, I got an invite as well, but I'd be away. I know, you did. Now I've got um, FOMO. Or uh, BOMO. Yeah, you... Botanical fear of... No, botanical of missing out. BOMO. Bobo. Botanical... Oh, no, that doesn't fit. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, tell me about the day. (laughs) Anyway, yeah. (laughs) That was a rabbit hole. I'll supply you with lots of photographs. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I'm going along to that where there's pims and peonies, basically, and they take you on a tour of the nursery and you can uh, see how they grow peonies, get loads of tips, and then you can make a peony wreath or flower crown. And in your place, you couldn't come with me. I'm taking one of my friends. (laughs) Oh, I really wish I could go. It was like a girl's day out. (laughs) <laughs> oh god, bubbles and bot- botany. <laughs> oh dear. 
Um, there's even more because there's also the project giving back as well, which is kind of covering 12 different gardens and obviously has been used as a way to boost giving back to charities as well. So look out for some of those gardens. But I did want to mention, let me just pull up the press release as a complete pro. There's actually going to be a really cool stand kind of display between Dalefoot Compost and the Eden Project, where you're actually going to get to see a slice of Cumbrian peat bog on display, which is helping to highlight the importance of peatland. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing that. And I think that will be a really great educational tool as well, because sometimes we don't comprehend stuff until we see it kind of. And I think that cross section is really going to work. So that is something I'm really going to make a beeline for. That sounds, that's a borrowed slice really, of national nature reserve. That's, that's, cool. a, that's a really, really good idea. And, and yeah. you're so right. We kind of, we can disassociate from things, can't we, when we haven't actually mm. seen them. It's like, is it really real? Do you, know, you know, like, how do you connect with it if you haven't actually seen or experienced it? Yeah, so that's a really totally. good idea with the peat, uh, especially if that's being so topical at the moment as well, isn't it? Definitely. And Dalefoot are supporting six different show gardens with their peat-free compost as well. So the new Blue Peter Garden, Discover Soil by Juliet Sargent, Bruin Dolphin Garden as well, Mother for Mother's Garden, the Wild Kitchen Garden and the RHS Queen's Jubilee Photographic Exhibition by Dave wow. Green as well. They are, they are going to be very busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, do a, they do a, veganic com- a vegan compost as well, which I've used in uh, my garden for the first time this year. Well, mm. actually filled the pots in autumn. So I'm really looking forward to seeing like how the plants grow in it too. I, I'm using, a, I don't think it's vegan, but the wool one. Yeah. 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 And I've been really impressed with the texture. Yeah. It's really kind of moist and um, it just feels good. You know yeah. what I mean? I know yeah. it sounds weird to talk about compost that way, but you know, we're, <laughs> oh, no. we're gardeners, we're growers, we know what we what we mean by that, but Absolutely. it's just it feels sexy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, from the outside in, um, the next one for me is the House Park Plant Clinic. I'm looking forward to popping over there. Um, and the, the reason is, and this this is something that we have to discuss, Michael, because when I read the press release, it really made me made me giggle. Yeah. So the House Plant Clinic is by the Plant Rescuer, which is Sarah Gerard Jones, um, and uh, and and oh the oh and the happy house plant company uh-huh. so uh, it's a collaboration and when i was reading about you know what the clinic was all about it says that all too often house plants are treated as disposable items like a wilted bunch of flowers but they are alive and do so much for us the least we can do is try our best to help them recover and uh, this kind of made me giggle because I am so torn. Like, yes, we absolutely should do the best we can to recover them. And I see Sarah's um, Instagram account. Like at the moment, she's trying to revive this um decades old Christmas cactus yeah. and it's amazing but Michael you and I have both said on this podcast how bad we are at throwing houseplants away so <laughs> I kind of I think it's that, that. it's that fine line of knowing when to give up as well yeah. and not to waste your resources on trying to keep the plants alive sometimes so yeah it's a fine balance but I love what they've been doing in um, partnership with like shops like Urban Tropicana to yeah. obviously sell these plant rescue boxes which I think really is really, really good idea. They're plants that have definitely got a chance of survival as well. So love that. I think the house plant kind of studio area, area is going to be more buzzy than ever because that was obviously new last year. You had that gorgeous display by um, Ian Drummond, the indoor garden design, the pink one. That was lovely. Um, the guys from there are back this year with a new display. There's also... One that is a kind of combo between the Aroid Attic and the Botanical Archive. And this is a houseplant studio where it's kind of got the theme of social media meets reality. And I think in there you can take various kind of shelfies and selfies kind of at Chelsea. But there's a few key plants there as well. Begonia pink minx I see is on this amazing list. There'll be loads of Monstra Oblique, loads of rare Anturiums as well. And they'll also have a bit of a display of a few key houseplant and kind of exotic plant books as well. And they'll also have a copy of the very bright pink Hortus Curious there. Don't you know, <laughs> Ellen Mary? Of course they will. Of course da, 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 da. PR power. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm Ellen. I'm doing something really racy at the moment. I've just put on some rose lip balm. Yeah. And now I've put some spearmint lip balm on. Rose and spearmint. I'm mixing them on my lips. Yeah. That is, that is so racy. <laughs> 
Right, what else are you looking forward to, darling? Well, apart from all of it, because obviously it's just, it's so exciting. <laughs> it's so much, isn't it? It's like it you need a whole just, this, When you look at what's going on at Chelsea or any of the flower shows, but there is something amazing, you know, something special about mm. Chelsea. There is just so much to do and see. And um, apart from all of the amazing show gardens, the Floral Marquee, which is like my favourite place to oh, go. Yeah, Chelsea. I've got something cool to tell you about that as well. The Floral Marquee <laughs> at Chelsea is like no, no other. It's just exquisite. And um, I really want to spend a bit more time meandering the, gar- the show gardens because I often get, don't get time to do that. And I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, finally for me, is I am really looking forward to meeting in person August's garden. (laughs) Oh, yeah. She messaged me and said she's going to be there. Oh, oh, do you know what? Sometimes this sounds awful, but you want to go to Chelsea in a disguise because you, you see people and it's great that you see them. You have a little conversation, but you feel like. The conversation's not even enough and you feel like you want to have a 30-minute slot for coffee with every person. So, yeah, it's kind of... It would be nice to go to Chelsea twice, once in disguise and once as the real person. (laughs) Some of us don't have to wear a disguise. We can be under anyway and be just fine. (laughs) Well, you you could be there and just let it rain on your hair and then you'd be... uh, (laughs) No um, one would know. (laughs) No one would even know it was me. Oh, um, Ellen. So, yeah, also I'm, in, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing, sorry, August Garden. Oh. Um, Kirsty, my little allotment will be there. Oh, the Cloud love. Gardener, I'm looking forward to What's she up to? Is she on a stand or? Muck boot stand. Oh, cool. She did that last year. That was great. I think she's just helping out this year. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the Cloud Gardener has basically yeah. lifted his balcony plants from Manchester cool. and plonks them on a balcony at Chelsea so looking forward to seeing uh, that airlifted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to seeing Grow Tropicals they're from Leeds and they've helped us out with a few uh, plants for Steph's Pat Lunch a few times um, also Binnie's Plants really yeah. great independent nursery they're actually going to be wearing Mr Plant Geek t-shirts as well <laughs> in the main marquee so that's how pretty cool you write, how did you manage to get your book and your t-shirts all they over just the asked me and I just made it happen. That's the thing. Did. Yeah. yeah. Make so, it happen. And I always say yes to everything, Ellen. That's what, um, as you well know. Absolutely. Um, I've also got one more thing from the Houseplant Studios, actually, which is Edible Bus Stop, who've been around for a few years now. I remember first uh, coming across those at the Tatton Park show, and they've actually got that biosonification sound again that that they had last year on the display, but they got it a little bit different this time because they got Woody Cook, who is obviously Norman Cook. Um, what's his name? Fatboy Slim. Fatboy Fat Slim's Boy son. Slim. Yeah. And he's going to be playing kind of plant music in a kind of almost like a DJ booth. And that is from the Edible Bus Stop. And that is going to be really, really cool as well. Oh, my so. God. That's going to be amazing. I went to a Fatboy oh, Slim. Many- oh, my God. There's another thing I forgot to tell you. Have you seen this ice garden? Oh, well, I've seen the design. It There's looks going to be incredible. a garden in ice as well, which is by the Plantman & Co. Oh, my God. John Warland. I haven't met him, but I just started uh, following slash stalking him on Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, I can't I can't wait to see that as well. Oh, I need, a, like, a to-do list on the day. <laughs> the thing is, with Chelsea, even if you had a to-do list, you wouldn't do the to-do list because you do get pulled around a lot do you know what i mean and you kind of have to go with the flow on the day of what you want to see yeah yeah totally you can't it's it's impossible to meet any certain timings or anything like that as well it's just you have to surrender yourself to the day (laughs) absolutely you do anyway i am very excited about it i actually don't know what i'm gonna wear and i'll tell you why i brought with me to the u.s the Mm -hmm. skirt i thought i was going to wear for chelsea because obviously mm-hmm. I'm not going home until after. However, mm-hmm. since I've been in the US, I've eaten a lot. <laughs> oh, you got that quickly. The skirt was already a bit tight. <laughs> All right. So now I'm like, hmm, maybe I will go shopping on my first day back in London before I go to Chelsea. No, but Ellen, I reckon if you had two days of really good, I reckon that just, yeah. It is just bloat. It is. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Bloat. So just, yeah, just bloat. lay off the whatever's pitter and hummus. Bread, 
bread, yeah. biscuit, bread biscuits and chocolate. <laughs> uh, before we go, Ellen, we're going to do a bit of a kind of, I don't know what you call it, but like a kind of secret ballot. Because yeah. what we've actually got in front of us is the shortlist for the Plant of the Year contest. Uh-huh. You might remember that last year, Circus Eternal Flame won. And yeah. um, I was really lucky because we took it to Steph's Pat lunch afterwards and I brought some of the plants home. And I just was sorting out my plants the other day. And I, I seem to have three of those plants here. <laughs> so if you want one, Ellen, I can um, yes, make, please. Yes. bequeath that to you. <laughs> bequeath. Yes, please, like, do you. I have to die to bequeath something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't I'm not sure. it. Um, I'd be really sad about that. Give um, it to me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's pretty cool. Um, but this year, there's 20 on this shortlist, which have been whittled down by a panel of 100 plant experts. And they're the ones that they'll actually do small speeches um, around on the day at about 11 a.m. at 11 a.m. in one of the marquees, kind of out the back. Yeah. And afterwards, they vote, and then the winner is crowned. But Ellen and I... I'm going to see if we can predict who the winner's going to be. And we're writing down on a piece of paper our first, second and third. This is almost like um, betting on the Grand National horse race, isn't it? (laughs) And we're then going to bring these envelopes with us to Chelsea and then open them after the new plant of the year is uh, crowned. And we'll see how close we were to guessing because it's a strong list. There's uh, Semponiums, there's a new variegated Forsythia, there's Dwarf Budliers, which I think have been out a few years, so they don't don't have a chance. There's a really nice hardy geranium, intense. Yeah. Regelia, Dwarf Regelia as well. Aeoniums. Mm, what are your favourites? Not giving too much away about what you might have voted for. Um, do you know what? I love the fact that the Aeoniums are in there. I think there's three different... Yeah, there's two Semponiums. And oh, one aeonium in and there. And one aeonium. Yeah. Okay, and I was really, really surprised cool. to see them in there. And then I was thinking, but is that too different for mm-hmm. plant of the year? Do you know what I mean? To be in there or not? Or would they Or would they go, oh, no, that's different. That's cool. Yeah, see, I think it, it's different. And I think in the case of Semponium, this is the first time that hybrid's been created. So to me, that is what plant of the year is about. Kind of, you know, yeah. movements in breeding, kind of brand new things. So... I think it has a chance. I don't think it will win, but, well, yeah. we'll find out in the envelope. We'll find out, won't we? I love the hardy geranium. I actually just think that they mm. are the people's plant. But I think a geranium, a geranium has won before, and I do wonder if they uh, think about that when they're kind yeah, of... Yeah, but that's... What would that be? Roseanne, which... Yeah, Roseanne many, won. Oh, but that was plant the centenary, which I guess is a bit different, but also... But it, it won plant the year first, didn't it? And then plant of the centenary. Hmm, I'm not sure, Thanks. actually. I have to check it out, but yeah. Hmm, what else? Uh, did the azalea make it to the list or not in the end? There was an know, azalea. actually. The spidery one. Yeah. Did that Ooh, make I don't it? think so. Let me pull it up. Um... No, oh, that. Do you know what? That's a t- if I if I was to have said what one yeah, I thought that's in, interesting. I, I would well may have picked that, <laughs> but it's not on the list. <laughs> uh-huh. So clearly, my um, idea of plant of the year isn't the same. I don't know, but I thought that would have made the short list as well. But that is why plant of the year is as gripping as Eurovision. <laughs> 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 there you go I can't I, I'm actually really looking forward to finding out this year and I don't usually go to where they announce it like I never usually remember to do it but I might actually go just for a little snoop this year and see I think you need an invite darling <laughs> what you could be yeah, but it's usually I mean at the back of the marquee where they're all on show they come oh, out and award them. them I didn't mean be at the ceremony but uh, like well, when no, they... there's, um, because they do um, the presentations are done like in one of the like marquees up near the entrance which is sort of invite only but I wonder if we could sneak you in in a disguise <laughs> how do you know I haven't been invited uh, have you then well if you have no. tell me and we can go together <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was interested to see that there were two roses as well this year. Uh, I don't yeah, remember yeah, seeing a rose know. in there for a while. Yeah. I don't know if a rose has ever won. Hmm. Mm. There's a gorgeous know. salvia, a really pink salvia in there. Amateur. Yeah, but it's it's nice, but it's not... Because I feel, like personally, there needs to be a real breakthrough, something that's changing kind of how plants are developed. 
potentially. But yeah, we'll see. And we'll see what's in your envelope. Ha ha. We will do. And I'll see what's in yours. Oh, if only I beat you. I would be so happy. <laughs> I love that you're so competitive. Ellen. <laughs> because I never beat you. <laughs> you not? No, I'm sure you do. <laughs> no, I don't think I do. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. Um, no, that should be cool. And obviously, yeah, we're going to lap up the floral marquee as well. And yeah, get Chelsea warmed up for everyone. <laughs> Are you bringing a guest with you this year? Yes, I'm bringing my assistant, Jen, actually. She's really excited, but she... It's going to be a problem, Ellen, because she dresses so well. Yeah. I've got real, like... I'm probably going to end up looking like some tramp. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Uh, oh, I know. Jen She's so stylish, like, honestly. Jen I might have to disown a, her. <laughs> she is such a fashion guru. And, like, uh, I watch her, like, Instagram and Twitter, and I'm just like, oh, my God, how do you have such style and know what to put together and all of that? Let's Maybe she should dress that. us. <laughs> yeah, maybe she should. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good idea. <laughs> um, no, so that should be really cool. But I, I said to her like, it's it will get really annoying because everybody would be obviously like talking to everyone and like they'll be like, oh hi yeah hi yeah, and it's like, and I know it's like going to be so annoying when you're like with someone that's then chatting to everyone else. So I was like, if you want to wander off, that's that's cool. But hopefully she doesn't come back drunk drunk on pims. Oh, I really and, hope that she does. And then yaks up on the Liverpool Street to Ipswich train. <laughs> yaks up, I love that phrase. She <laughs> might look stylish, but not when she's drunk. <laughs> uh, ding dong, so that'd be cool, really. It will be. But I really wanted to um, wear some anti-outfit. I wanted to wear, um, like, a suit on the top and just some shorts and flip-flops on the bottom. But that feels a bit too 2020 now, doesn't it? I don't know. We've all moved on now. Uh, I know. 2022, <laughs> Michael. Ding to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, we're really looking forward to Chelsea. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode with Helen Bowen talking about all the ins and outs of Chelsea and all the drama llamas as well that may or may not occur. <laughs> it will all be smooth, I am absolutely <laughs> sure. Cool.com. Yay. Anyway, I'm now off. What are you doing for the rest of today? Uh, I need to finish off some work, then I need to get outside and keep finishing off my mess, honestly. I knew yesterday that I needed to finally get some stuff sorted outside because it's just I needed to like create some content and do this and that. And I never had any time to actually stop and because I'm always then doing stuff in such a mess. Yeah. But of course, my tidying up process is also a mess. So I kind of like still in the middle of all of that but it'll come right in the end but like I work in such a muddle oh my god it's not even funny it's just I, compost I, everywhere it's like why are you working like this Michael you just oh my god because everything's just in a rush and you've got to get it sort of done you know and I no, do that but, and then... but the thing is if I was more methodical then I probably wouldn't need to rush so much <laughs> I don't know I think you work with how you feel you know how you always say to me about not working in the morning because I can't work in the morning yeah you sort it's of just more rewarding when you feel. then do get it tidied so yeah you know, yeah just go with that <laughs> okay well I will be seeing you at Chelsea then on Monday you will absolutely so yes in your flip flops and shorts <laughs> cool have a nice uh, flight thank you <laughs> The music for the Plump Bass podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. Semi Echo.